Dana has been running for months and uh, he just landed a, um, an endorsement, which was surprising. Yeah, to say the <laughs> least. So welcome, Dana. Thank you, thank you. Um, I guess a little bit about myself. Uh, well, I became a Metro employee in 2013, uh, right after uh, graduating from the University of Oregon uh, with a degree in planning and public policy. Uh, that's why I became a Metro employee, because Metro is a public, um, a public uh, government, a, but it's also a, pl a regional planning agency. Um, you know, after I became an employee there, I became heavily involved with the unions. I fought for six days and temp workers, but I really learned their internal policies and what they are doing right and what they aren't. And I see such great opportunity with Metro uh, that they're not taking advantage of that I want to, you know, become a leader within Metro to actually achieve those things. And Catherine Harrington, the current representative, is termed out, so I've decided to put my name in the hat and uh, luckily, the Washington County Democrats, they like my ideas and like who I am and my experience and training, and they've endorsed me. So <clears throat> here I am. Yeah, that was that was awesome news. So for uh, those in the metro area, they, they, they probably vaguely understand what it does. Yep. It's kind of an amorphous entity. And then for those outside of the metro area, they probably have no idea no what idea. it does. So maybe you could describe a little bit more about uh, the responsibilities of the council and, uh, and yeah. what they do. So Metro is a regional planning agency that covers three counties, uh, Clackamas, Washington County, and Multnomah, and 24 different cities. Uh, they create a 50-year plan and a roadmap on how to achieve that 50-year plan. It's non-binding, but they do have power. Uh, they, their main power lies within the urban growth boundary. The urban growth boundary is basically a line in the sand where on one side it has to stay rural, on the other side can be developed. Um, they also control the Oregon Zoo, the convention center, um, some other facilities. Uh, but their main, oh, well, they actually, one of the big ones actually is uh, that most people don't know about is they also control the waste management of the region, about 1.8 million people. Uh, so they are the second highest government in Oregon, right under Oregon itself. Uh, it's amazing how many people don't even know it, it exists, but it has an incredible amount of power uh, that just goes unnoticed. And what's the budget? Uh, let's see. I think it's about five hundred million. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to get bigger. So. That's that's a startling number. Yeah, uh, I mean it's it's a large government that really, I'd say only about. Half the doors I knock on actually know it exists. The other half are, have no no clue it exists. So you've been quite quite the trooper on your campaign, and that's that's been really impressive. So, uh, mm -hmm. how often do you go out and and uh, and what are you hearing from the people you talk to? Uh, at the bare bare minimum, I go out every weekend. Um, you know, I went out yesterday. I'll go out today. Went out last week, um, knocking on those doors. Uh, if I don't work on the um, weekday, I'll go out and knock some more. Uh, but what I'm hearing is a lot of concern about public transportation, um, a lot of concern about um, congestion on the roads, and some concern about affordable housing. Um, those are the big ones that are coming up every, just about every door that I'm knocking. So, uh, when it comes to public transportation, um, it's interesting, you, I go into these areas where everybody has you know, some nice houses and cars, but they all want the option of public transportation. They all want electric buses and more uh, services and you know, um, more ex, you know, expanded services and faster services. And I think they're willing to pay for it. It's just no one's actually knocked on the door and talked to them about it. So, and affordable housing, you know, there's, just I think everybody in general, where, wherever you're landing on the economic scale, uh, we're worried about it because it, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing homelessness everywhere. We're seeing um, you, you know, younger people not being able to afford housing. Uh, we're seeing three, four people becoming roommates in a one, two bedroom place. And it's just it's not comfortable for anybody to see that happening. So. 
Does Metro have any jurisdiction over uh, housing policy? Um, so they could do something like the Oregon legislature tried to pass in the last session, or is that really belong to the either the city or the county or the state? So the thing about Metro, Metro has power over what it deems a regional concern, whatever it deems a regional concern or whatever the state deems a regional concern. Uh, they are considering a construction excise tax to build affordable housing. Um, we'll see if that actually goes through or not, but they, they could do it if they wanted to. There's, there's seven councillors, uh, six districts and one chair seat that's at large. And if the majority of them vote for something and push for something, they could do something about it. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the no cause evictions, you could, you could deal with that. Uh, ooh, uh, I think that's more of a local issue, uh, local ordinances. Um, Metro would have more of authority. So Metro doesn't even have the authority to dictate density. Um, so if it can't even dictate something like that, I don't think it could, you know, dictate local laws. Um, I think they could be challenged on that one. But when it comes to creating a regional tax to build something, uh, they could do that. Interesting. <clears throat> um, so uh, um, uh, how many opponents do you have? Uh, just one opponent right now. Um, I started back in July. He was recruited and announced in December. So just me and him. Um, so, uh, so other than, than seeing the opportunities in, in, but from working for Metro, what, uh, what prompted you to run? Yeah. So one of my big passions actually is waste management. Um, in that, <laughs> Metro, yeah, I know. Right. I'm actually a hazardous waste, a, a temp hazardous waste technician for Metro right now. And wow. Yeah. It's, it, it floats my boat, but, um, Metro has that control. They handle how all the region's waste is handled. Right now, we truck and dump about 1.4 million U.S. tons of trash 150 miles east of Arlington, Oregon, every single year. We just truck it and dump it. Um, and as a planner, I like to look at different options. And I think a fantastic option would be to build a state-of-the-art carbon-negative waste-to-energy system. Because if you look at, say, Sweden, where it's extremely successful... Uh, that's enough trash to provide 15 to 20 percent of the energy needs of the region and with the right technology be carbon negative. Um, so I've been knocking on a lot of doors and I've, I've talked to Republicans, Democrats, independents, Green parties, everybody across. The board. I talked to a Trump supporter the other day and they said this was a good idea. And, but the current council isn't doing anything for the past 20 years. They've had a contract out to Waste Management Corporation, just truck and dump it. And they're just probably going to renew that contract for another 10 years. That's, that, I, to me, that's unacceptable. There's such golden opportunity. We need to start the ball rolling. It's a 10-year project, less if people are really excited about it. But to actually s achieve it, we have to start it. And they're not starting it. Interesting. I, I just want to jump in and say, yay! I used to work in the I used to work in the industry. I know a lot of the the waste management guys out on the landfills, and uh, I know how that industry works. And yeah. uh, you're you're absolutely right. And I'm so glad you're interested in bringing that forward because waste energy. I mean, France does it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's it's, it's yeah. a no brainer. Just like yeah, uh, no you know, health insurance for all. Uh, and yes, that I had no idea you had that kind of power in that role. So yay! Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the unknown powers of Metro. Um, you know, that's one of the golden opportunities of Metro and actually being uh, being elected to this seat. I mean, it, it, people don't even know it exists, but I could help dictate, you know, providing almost 20 percent of the energy needs of the region. That's a huge amount of power um, that no one knows about. Plus, you're not dumping crap into the ground. Yeah, exactly right. I do. I I, I dress in a bubble suit and handle that waste. <laughs> you know, it's pretty gross. Uh, having a different option would be great. Betsy, is there any 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 uh, questions from the line? Uh, well, I think he answered part of it uh, with the, the waste trash management. But Jilly Love wanted to know what are your goals in terms of implementing improvements his locals need? Yeah, so my local constituents of Washington County, uh, that's a great one. Um, 
you know, I, like I said before, I've been getting a lot of feedback on public transportation. So one of my goals is to electrify TriMet. Um, even though an electric bus costs twice as much as a diesel bus, the lifetime savings is there. Um, so TriMet currently has a diesel fleet of 700. But if that was a fleet of 700 electrics right now, we would save $100 million in fuel and maintenance costs over 12 years. <laughs> Uh, and that's not including the, the health benefits of cleaner air. So right now, fiscally, it is just the right thing to do. Ignoring the, you know, the environmental argument, just fiscally. So that's why I've been getting a lot of positive you know, feedback on that. And then add on to the environmental aspect of it, it's just a no-brainer. So I'm proposing a transition phase as a diesel bus you know, expires, because everything has a life expectancy, and so do diesel buses. Just replace it with an electric. So if we just did that, we'd probably have an electric fleet within 15 years and saving tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So I think that's a pretty good one. And that, with those savings, we could expand and improve services in Washington County. And that's what I'm hearing at the doors. Uh, yeah, and Jilly Love also asked, I think, a follow-up to the trash question. Are we talking yeah. methane power? No, we're not talking about methane powder. Um, you could do that with, say, food scraps. You could make a methane digester. I'm proposing a technology called pyrolysis. It's how charcoal is made. You heat something in the absence of oxygen. So the great thing about this is it's kind of it's agnostic to the feedstock. So you can throw anything in it, uh, sewage, uh, municipal solid waste, uh, health waste even. And so when you do it, you create a natural gas, a crude oil, and charcoal, carbon, pure carbon. Uh, with the natural gas and crude oil, you can turn that into electricity. And with the carbon, you can sequester that into agricultural fields, which Oregon is you know, ag agricultural state, and it improves uh, productivity. And because you're putting it into the soil, it's actually carbon negative. So you're not just lowering your foot carbon footprint, you're actually reversing your carbon footprint because that carbon is sequestered in the soil for hundreds of years. Um, so, yeah, you get natural gas and a crude oil that you can turn into electricity, and then you get charcoal that you put into the agricultural system to make it carbon negative. Uh, Jilly Love also asked, how will you get the board to implement these things? Uh, right now, I have the trades. I have the endorsement at the Columbia Pacific Building Trades. They all want it. Um, they want to, you know, build it. Uh, environmentalists, uh, whom I've talked to, um, they all want it. They want it built. So it's a matter of organizing. So I've been a union shop steward for five years. And to get things done, you have to organize. You, and as a trained planner, I know to get, any, get anything done, it has to be bottom up. So I need to go to the community, the local, you know, the local groups, say, here's my idea, and now I need you to help me get this done. So when we all come together, you know, and come to the board, say, like, here's my constituents and here's all the organ organizations in my district. We all want this to happen. Let's make this happen. I personally would only have one vote, but my job is to be the representative of 260,000 people. That means I need to go and organize them to empower me so I can convince the other counselors to support me. Wow, I, I really love how you you can you can boil problems down in, and to solutions that that in ways that make sense, like the savings with the electric buses. Um, yeah. uh, so I wish you the best of luck with that stuff. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. I mean, there's lots of opportunity with Metro, like I said, um, uh, you know, affordable housing. So we're just about out of time. Is there anything that you'd like to say uh, in conclusion? We just got a terrible freeze frame on on Dana there. You're back, Dana. No. It was an awesome freeze frame, though. I got to tell you. Oh, great, perfect. <laughs> so whatever yeah. you're saying, finish with wherever you were. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I was just saying there's a lot of untapped opportunity with Metro. Uh, you know that includes affordable housing. Um, you know, but that also you know what also includes is TriMet and waste of energy. It's just we need to tap into that power that past. Metro councilors have never taken advantage of. Well, best of luck on your campaign. How do we uh, how do we support you financially? 
That would be great. Uh, uh, you go to my website, www.danacarstensen.com, and there's a donation link on there. And, you know, donate what you can. $5 makes a difference. $5 means I have 15 flyers, and that's 15 doors I can give a flyer to. Anything and everything helps. And uh, that's S-E-N, not S-O-N. Uh, Correct. If you... <laughs> It's always important to have the right URL. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck on your uh, and your uh, walk on neighborhoods this afternoon. Uh, yep. Thank you so much. And we'll be watching your campaign closely. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate.